All righty, thanks, Paul, for that gracious introduction. Um, I want to tell you about a collaboration of uh, three institutions and the work of 17 people over a period of about a year uh, in the construction of the 100 Years of Grand Digital Archive. And uh, it's been my pleasure to work with such talented people and to uh, work with uh, some amazing materials. The 100 uh, Years of Grand collaboration is uh, the work of the Arizona State University Library, the Klein Library at Northern Arizona University, and the uh, Grand Canyon National Park Museum. And ultimately, uh, this project goes back to uh, uh, the uh, spring of 2016, uh, when um, uh, history librarian Ed Edding and I got together in my office one day, and he, he, um, he and I have had uh, over 50 years of experience working in our Greater Arizona collection. And we were, uh, Ed asked me, you know, is there some way that we can honor the career of the great Senator Carl Hayden from Arizona? and his role in the founding of the Grand Canyon National Park in 1919. And, and we realized at that time that, wow, uh, you know, three years away, we've got a centennial coming up. What a great opportunity uh, to do that work of honoring the senator and his role in the founding of the National Park. And so uh, we thought about who appropriate partners would be and uh, immediately identified uh, Pete Runge, who spoke yesterday uh, from the special collections at the Northern Arizona University Klein Library. And uh, uh, so we, we called up Peter, we had a nice meeting with him, and we, we talked to him and we realized, you know, the stars of the show here are uh, the staff and the facilities of the Grand Canyon National Park. And so uh, we asked Peter, uh, have you got any re working relationships with staff from the National Park? And uh, Peter uh, identified Kim Beesom from the Grand Canyon National Park Museum uh, as a, an appropriate collaborator. And so uh, we were off and running uh, and writing the grant in the uh, spring of uh, 2017, the early spring of 2017. And so uh, just to tell you a little bit about what's involved in a project like this, um, we knew, uh, Ed and I knew that there were wonderful pockets of historical materials that were available in the uh, Senator Hayden's papers and a number of other collections uh, at the uh, Greater Arizona Collection here at the ASU Library. And Peter, having long experience with his materials, also could identify important things. Um, and so uh, we began to do some searching uh, in our systems uh, to identify uh, the, the pockets of stuff that we thought might be appropriate. Um, and so we started by looking at Arizona Archives Online. Uh, how many of you have looked at Arizona Archives Online? We have a few hands. Uh, this is the collaborative database where the archivists of Arizona post finding aids to the archival collections across the state. And uh, if you've worked with finding aids in archival collections, you know that these are typically bulk level descriptions. Uh, you're uh, fortunate if you can get down to the folder level in archival description, uh, given the uh, thousands of linear feet of, of material that we have. Um, and so uh, we're, we're trying to find the right corner of the haystack um, to look in these collections and identify specific items that were, that were exciting, uh, like that one. Um, so uh, ultimately, uh, we put together this collaboration, put together a grant proposal um, to our state library for library, library Services and Technology Act funds. And so this project is ultimately funded by the U.S. Department of Education uh, and uh, through the Institute of Museum and Library Services, and those monies are distributed uh, to uh, worthy proposals across Arizona by your Arizona State Library. Um, what we envision really was a, a project where there were uh, several uh, uh, loci of activity. We, we had the advantage here at ASU of having a robust and useful digital repository, the ASU Digital Repository. Uh, and in fact, uh, NAU, for many years, they had been working to build the Colorado Plateau Digital Repository. So we had technical expertise and we had a platform or places to put these materials so they could be made accessible. 
Um, we, uh, we also uh, envision including the Grand Canyon National Park and uh, NAU stepped forward to uh, work with Kim Beesom to select and digitize materials from the Grand Canyon National Park. So in that part of the model, uh, in fact, materials were literally picked up at the Grand Canyon and driven to Flagstaff for digitization. And the museum staff provided us with the contextual information or the metadata that helped us understand and make sense of the materials that they contributed. Um, in our model at ASU, we, uh, we chose to outsource the digitization, which had its very, uh, some very interesting implications for workflow. And ultimately, uh, history librarian Ed Edding spent much of the first four or five months in the work of selecting the material from these collections. And then I would go in and package those things up and keep track of where they came from so we could put them back. Um, and then shipping them up to our uh, vendor in uh, Salt Lake City for actual digitization. Uh, you'll find when you enter the uh, 100 Years of Grand Project, and, and I want to uh, point out that all you need to do is Google 100 Years of Grand, and a uh, link to this project comes right up at the top of that. You can do that on your phone. Uh, although the, the repository isn't uh, necessarily optimized for mobile uh, display, uh, you can actually see some pretty cool things right through your phone. Um, so ultimately, uh, we have this distributed model for digital library work. And I want to get to, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is what the uh, homepage for the uh, uh, digital library looks like. So what you have ultimately is a website that points to two different digital repositories, the NAU repository and the ASU repository. And the uh, NAU repository also includes the materials that were uh, digitized uh, from the Grand Canyon National Park collections. So scrolling down a little bit on this website, uh, you can see that in the case of ASU, we were able to, to make some prepackaged customized search results by format. So you can actually select photographs or correspondence or ephemera um, to look through these materials. Uh, in the case of NAU, they were able to segregate their materials by the NAU materials and the Grand Canyon uh, National Park materials. When you search in the uh, repository, this is a, a search results display, and uh, ultimately this is at ASU's collection. Uh, I added some slides for, from ASU's work here. So uh, you see titles for individual items, and uh, usually an abstract or description, the contributors or authors, and the date of creation. Um, copyright played a big role. Uh, in the uh, uh, selection of materials here. We chose to focus uh, historically on the period 1890 to 1940, uh, partly because we knew we had a large amount of, of material that we could digitize from that period, and also because uh, we knew that um, we had uh, 1924 and earlier, much of these materials had fallen into the public domain, and so uh, we had the ability to uh, digitize and make things accessible. When you look at the item level description, this is a single description of a particular item, you can see the richness of the metadata that was produced by our uh, uh, metadata librarian, Carolyn Thomas. Um, because we had collections that had been professionally curated for 30 or 40 years, we've been building legacy data and descriptions all of that time working with these collections. So there were certain descriptions that were able to, existing descriptions that we were able to leverage from finding aids or earlier efforts at item level description in the archives. There were other descriptions we had to build from scratch. And so what you find in the overall project is over 700 items that have been selected, described, and digitized, and loaded, and made accessible to many people. Um, this work is uh, very detail-oriented. And um, you'll, you'll see that we've applied standardized subject headings uh, within that description uh, that enable us to pull together like materials. Um, you'll also see uh, series references to 
um, topical groupings that Ed devised um, to uh, organize these materials in some different ways. So we had these uh, series like Free Enterprise that were set up to represent different chronological periods within the 1890 to 1940 period. The other thing to notice on this is that uh, on the right, underneath the call number for the file, the actual file name, um, you'll see a, a link called download. And download's very exciting. Um, this means we get to give away stuff. Uh, so one of the challenges with a project like this is trying to manage the, the risks of copyright. And uh, looking at these collections, we had some materials that were in the public domain by virtue of age. We had some materials that were in the public domain by virtue of being government documents. We had other materials that had been donated to the repositories with deeds of gift that actually represented a legal transfer of copyright to ASU or to NAU. And then we have these wonderful things known as orphan works. And uh, some chuckling, how many people have experienced or encountered orphan works in their travels? Well, just a few. So orphan works are lovely things that are uh, pieces of information where copyright is still active but we either don't know who owns it or we can't find contact information who owns that piece of information. Uh, this creates some real challenges for us when we're, when we're really trying to put things online and give them away. And so what you'll find is that there are many things in, the, in these collections where uh, we have the download link lit up and uh, we've done copyright research on this. We believe it's either in the public domain or we own sufficient rights to give the material away. And you can actually download and reuse publication or high quality photography or ephemera uh, from these collections and we would never, not even know that you were there. Um, and so you can directly download really great stuff uh, from this site. You'll see some other places where the download link is blocked. And this is a, an interesting challenge for us because here's a place where copyright was still active. And in some circumstances, uh, they, we can employ a fair use harbor to make such materials available to the ASU community. Um, so if you are an ASU person and you log in to the repository, additional materials become available for download. Um, but this is about managing risk, ultimately. So you will also find things, uh, especially things published after 1924, uh, where we've pre presented the description, we presented a PDF of the uh, material, for example, um, and uh, download is not permitted. And uh, one of the sort of fun things about this is um, over time, as things get older, uh, more things fall into the public domain. So one of the challenges is actually figuring out how to uh, track when things fall into the public domain and to open those things up for download and reuse over time. Now, now we get to the mapping part. Um, and uh, I am uh, greatly indebted to Matt Toro uh, and to uh, Carolyn Thomas, a metadata librarian, for their efforts in this part. Uh, this is the uh, first page of a really wonderful ESRI story map that uh, Matt and his crew put together for us at the very latest stages of the project. We, we were, the last month of this, it was crazy, uh, in uh, July of uh, 2018. And, um, you know, before I get into that, I want to make the point that we wanted this project to be completed by July 2018. Um, one of the selling points for this project, as far as being a grant proposal, was we, we wanted to demonstrate that we could make the material available well before the centennial, which was last week, um, so that tourism businesses, the park, uh, interested tourists could actually download and use these things in time for the centennial. And we received the support of the uh, Arizona Office of Tourism, the Tourism Office in Flagstaff, and other places because we intentionally wanted to give away materials so they could be used in a timely manner. 
So going back to the, uh, the story map, um, we've got some really great uh, representations of material through database in these repositories, but what's missing is really a visual navigation of the material. And so in the story map, um, uh, we spent quite a bit of time plotting coordinates for uh, individual pieces that are in the digital archive, and there are uh, over 200 items that we were able to plot, where we were able to identify a place name and, convert, and identify the coordinates associated with it so that item could be uh, located in this lovely story map. So looking at this, it's presented here as a heat map. And so the areas that you see with a, a very large red areas uh, are places where there are multiple items. And as you would expect, you see quite a few of those things uh, located at the South Rim Visitor Center and along the South Rim. You can ex expand the map and actually get some uh, space between the various uh, points on the heat map. If you click on a point in the heat map, it brings up a, a lovely box uh, that gives you summary information about the item you have selected, but more importantly, it gives you a link to the repository version of that item where you can download the high quality version of it. Um, along the way, uh, starting in uh, January of 2018, uh, we started doing weekly uh, Facebook posts uh, regarding the 100 Years of Grant project. Um, and we had some sort of surprising things that came out of that. One of the, um, uh, we were trading posts. Uh, ASU would, would post one week, NAU would post the next. And every third or fourth or fifth week, NAU would post an image from the Grand Canyon uh, National Park Museum collections. And so there were some surprising things. Uh, the, the photo of the Navajo Bridge on the left was one of the earliest posts in the project. And, um, Hard to tell from the screenshot, but you can, uh, that uh, photo generated over 60,000 likes. Um, and uh, we had some uh, other materials that, uh, there was another photograph of a mule uh, coming out of the, a cave and uh, about to uh, enter the Kaibab uh, suspension bridge that uh, uh, generated 46,000 likes and some, some incredible number. Um, and in fact, the Mule Handler's uh, Facebook page came in and shared that, and we got quite a bit of boost out of that. So, you know, watching, watching this happen and then trying to chase down the shares and see who was reaching this stuff was an interesting uh, part of the project. Um, we had enormous numbers of hits for certain photographs. Another factor was uh, when the Grand Canyon National Park shared our Facebook posts, our uh, results uh, increased astronomically. Uh, there was a huge difference. When, when the libraries would post, you might get a couple thousand hits. When the Grand Canyon National Park came along, uh, we would get national exposure and just enormous numbers of hits. There, were, uh, all, there was also tweeting going on on a regular basis throughout the project. Um, I don't have really good stats for the um, uh, impact of the tweeting, but ultimately we, we spent a fair amount of time working on uh, getting this information out where people could use it. Um, just a few more fun things from the collections. Um, you'll see some uh, very cool ephemera items. Um, uh, from uh, this one from the Fred Harvey collection and ultimately from the Greater Arizona collection of the, here at ASU. Um, uh, lovely photograph and, uh, and uh, diary page, illustrated diary page from uh, the Carnegie Caltech expedition, uh, this material from the Klein Library at NAU. Uh, and here's uh, some photography from the National Park Service and the Grand Canyon National Park Museum. Uh, and here, for sort of before and after uh, or re-photography of the Phantom Ranch swimming pool in 1934 and 1961. All right, so that's a, a quick walkthrough of this uh, collaborative project. Um, and uh, hardly want to keep you from getting to lunch, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have about the work that we've done. Uh, the gentleman asked if this is a, a work in progress or are we all done? 
And, uh, you know, this is one of these things where um, the uh, uh, project can take a life on of its own. We, we spoke last week at the uh, Grand Canyon Symposium hosted by the uh, Grand Canyon Historical Society. And sure enough, uh, uh, Park Ranger, the librarian from the Grand Canyon National Park, approached us and said, we have many more things in the library at the Grand Canyon National Park, and we'd like to participate in this. Um, so uh, there, there's certainly, there were other partners, many other partners that we could have chosen in this project. Um, the uh, Arizona State Archives has material, the Arizona Historical Society, Universe, uh, University of Arizona has material. So there, there are a lot of potentials for uh, uh, continuing the project. Uh, another thing that I thought was very interesting in this work was um, one of the spin-offs of this project was the Institute for Humanities Research, the ASU Institute for Humanities Research seed grant that we, we received um, in, and that partly supported this conference. And the, um, the review committee for the seed grant asked us this very interesting question that actually uh, came up yesterday, I believe, in Teresa's uh, presentation, and that was how do Native American communities uh, do wayfinding, transmit information about places and routes and ways to go around the Grand Canyon. And I don't know the answer to that. And so the IHR people asked us to look into that and to see if there were some opportunities to uh, partner with uh, the Native American communities here in Arizona. Uh, which is actually a big ask because there are, in fact, at least uh, eight or nine of them. Um, and I, I'd also like to say, in relation to that, that we chose not to include those communities in this first go-round of the project. And uh, part of that was it really is not our place to tell their story. And the other thing I want to talk about in relation to that is the um, protocols for the handling of Native American archival materials, which is an ethical standard uh, that really came out of, actually began with some discussions in the mid-1990s at Flagstaff at Northern Arizona University. And those protocols call for in-depth discussions with uh, representatives of the Native American communities regarding uh, the use, the reuse, the presentation of uh, materials relating to their history and their culture. Um, having some experience in working in these areas, uh, we, uh, NAU has had a long experience with uh, collaborative work with the Hobi tribe and with Stuart Koyoyemtua, uh, who is the Cultural Resources, uh, Cultural Preservation Office Director at Hopi. Um, and we talked about this and came to the conclusion that in this first go around, it would be very difficult to have a respectful and in-depth conversation uh, with the various uh, tribal governments uh, regarding a project of this nature. So that may be something that we turn to um, in the course of the IHR grant. Uh, we want to begin to have a conversation um, and see if there's a way that um, these things might be shared. With the recognition that, the very important recognition, that every tribe and every tribal government and even subdivisions within those groups are going to come at those questions very differently. Um, it's really not right to say, what would Native Americans do? Um, every tribe has a different perspective about those things. And so we anticipate a variety of answers to that question as we get uh, down into some of the details. I'm sorry, that was a really lengthy response to your question. Woo! Uh, Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Baseball's here. Thank, thanks goodness I got that. <laughs> um, I noticed you had your uh, list of columns of different types of materials you had, and you didn't have a grouping for maps. And I was wondering if that was one where you were going to add in some of the maps that have been scanned for the project. Yeah, I feel badly about that too. I, um, you know, Matt, Matt identified some maps, yeah, <laughs> some maps for us. 
and um, we kind of ran out of time. We, we also had some issues regarding uh, ex access to large-scale scanning facilities that might have been worked out given more time. Um, but really, the IHR uh, Sea Grant project is about surveying. And uh, it's focused on mapping the Grand Canyon. It's about surveying to find out what materials might be available for a future expansion of the project. Other questions? All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>